We're following each of the orchestral sections, hearing them all in action. And it's time for the big boys, the brass. This is the power section, the section that makes noise. You know, when forte means loud, they're loud. One of the first classical concerts I ever went to, I bought some very cheap seats that were placed behind the orchestra. Great idea, until the brass first came in. And I could hear nothing but brass. I was terrified of their entry for the rest of the concert. Which is why the brass section is usually placed at the back, as far away from the audience as possible. The brass section is loud and hard. No wonder the military love brass. Brass, get it? <coughs> the scientific definition of the brass section? Metal instruments you blow in. No reeds here, that's for the cowards in the woodwind. Historically, the brass section has really grown in importance over time. Classical composers like Haydn and Mozart used it sparingly, usually for loud bits like endings. As ever, the leading symphonic innovator was Ludwig van Beethoven, who showed what the power of the brass section could be. He scored this section for trumpets and three different types of trombone. At moments like this, it really feels the brass is being used as an entire section for the first time. The next generation of romantic composers, like Berlioz, Wagner, Mahler or Bruckner, the brass section proved invaluable for their work. I mean, honestly, throw a stick at a Bruckner symphony and you'll likely hit a brass instrument. The brass section helped to build the scale and drama romantic composers often sought. These composers not only promoted the brass section, but also employed new instruments, like the Wagner tuba, which we'll come back to soon. OK, to break down the section individually, we usually go down from top, trumpets, horns, trombones, and deep down, tubas. Starting at the top, a trumpet may look rather newfangled, but untangle that body and you're holding one of the oldest instruments of all. These are the instruments that welcomed Egyptian pharaohs thousands of years ago, and still do, incidentally, in Verdi's Aida. Small, thin tubing means the trumpet is the highest and brightest of the brass. Occupying those higher registers mean it can take a leading role. Yes, a trumpet can be cool and jazzy. Next comes the horn, another instrument with pretty basic origins. There's a distant quality to its sound, a reminder of its roots as a hunting instrument. The horn is used so often in symphonic works that it clearly serves a very important purpose. Its prominent but warm tone can be heard above instruments, but it doesn't dominate. There is a tradition in the finale of Mahler's first symphony for the horn players to stand up. Now this isn't in the score but I think it's interesting how this tradition has come about because I'm not sure you notice unless they were standing up because the horn isn't quite so distinctive and there's other stuff going on as we'll find out later. Back to specifics. Horn players keep their other hand inside the horn, allowing a micromanagement of tone and pitch. Question, why do horns make such a loud noise? Answer, you would too if someone blew in you one end and shoved the yeah, You get the idea. Wagner uses horns, well, technically Wagner tubers, perfectly to portray the safety of the home and fortress Valhalla. The Wagner tuba was developed with Wagner himself engaged in that development, 
to fill a gap between the horns and the trombones. And I think that shows you the degree of technical innovation and micromanagement that has gone into creating the sonic landscape of the symphony orchestra. But back to the horn. It's a versatile instrument. I think of it as a gateway between woodwind and brass. And that's why you'll often see horns in wind partitas. Horns are a crucial symphonic component. I'd say probably the most important of the brass section. Next comes trombones. Big trumpets with slidey bits. And, by decibel count, the loudest instrument in the orchestra. They go deeper than trumpets and horns and can really add power and punch to music. And finally, we have that strange beast, the tuba. This does the job of the bass parts for the brass and it does go pretty deep. Tubas and trombones are so loud, they normally add background brass to beef up the sound. When they play on their own, they stand out clearly, as in this final movement of Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony. The main thing my ear latches onto in the brass is normally the difference between the horn and the trumpets. So, coming back to Mahler first, can you hear the difference between the trumpets and the horns in this section? Fairly straightforward. Trumpets heralding, as they always do, and horns more in the background. Here it is with the answers. When all the brass are playing, it becomes harder to distinguish them, but you don't necessarily need to. Let's have a look at that Mahler I played earlier in the video again. So brass instruments are so loud that they can actually dominate other brass instruments and used together the sound can wash very effectively over you. I'll show you the answers to that section and also some commentary on how I hear it. So that's it, brass section, gotta hand it to them, but maybe bring some earplugs. Please like and subscribe.